fishing. Even when you're in the mood, let's go fishing. Well, it's just me and you. Head on down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing. When you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing has been brought to you in part by Rapala. Premium fishing gear, crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Bait to go, the most versatile and portable bait container for anglers. Thousands of anglers each year take advantage of the cold temperatures in the northern part of North America, and when their lakes freeze, they pursue their favorite fish through the ice. Ice fishing is a favorite northern pastime that can be enjoyed by experienced anglers, novice fishermen, families, and especially kids. I love to ice fish, and you know what? We've had such crazy weather this winter that I think this is gonna be my last ice fishing trip. Today they're calling for about 18 Celsius. Over the last three days, all the snow that was on this lake actually melted, so right now it's really dangerous to walk. And before I actually stepped on the ice, I had to make sure that it was safe, because a lot of times the ice that's along the shoreline will start to deteriorate first, and when you go to step on, it's easy to get a soaker, and that can really mess up your day. So because I'm pike fishing today, I've actually picked a part of the lake where the water's pretty shallow. So you can see from the terrain behind me that there's a lot of cattails and very low land. So I want to find some weeds. Now, because pike don't move around too much during the day, I'm going to cut a whole bunch of holes and see if I can locate them. I'm going to set up one tip up, and I'm also going to be jigging all the different holes. Hopefully, I'll find some fish. In most lakes, ice fishermen will use a couple of techniques to catch their fish. They'll either use live bait on set lines, or they'll jig with the rod with either an artificial lure or with live bait. In different jurisdictions, you're allowed to use a number of different fishing outfits per person when you're fishing. In Ontario, for example, you're allowed two lines per angler. In Quebec, over 10. And in some of the U.S. states, up to 10 or 14 lines per fisherman. You know, normally when I get out on the ice, it's pretty cold. So I've got everything from portable ice huts to um, augers, sonars, and so on. But today I'm fishing pretty simply, and I'm fishing shallow water. So the sonar wouldn't really help me, and I really don't need a shelter because it's going to be like 18 degrees. What I do have, though, is all my gear in this handy bag, a seat so I don't get too tired from all the fishing action, and I'm going to be setting up my tip-up first. This is the actual tip-up stand that connected on, and it's got that trigger system. I'm gonna take my tip-up rod that's got a drop shot rig on it, my bait cloud, I'm gonna drop this into the water so that the bubbles attract the fish in the scent that's released underwater, and I'm gonna set it up with my minnows right over here. So what I'm gonna do here is just make a bit of a base for the stand, and one thing that I'm gonna also try to do is make sure that the stand is the right distance away. So that's a good distance. You can see the rod tip's gonna be right there. Now, watch this. I'm gonna release the line down until it hits the bottom. Should be about eight to 10 feet here. Now I'm doing that so that I don't have a minnow on there swimming around. So that's on bottom. So you see the tip and jig has this really nice system here, the hook. You can see this is perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is take one of these bait cloud balls. This is actually the tournament one. 
so it's got flake in it. And all this is is going to release air bubbles, which will make a nice column and create a lot of noise underwater. And it also is infused with organic fish oil. So as soon as I drop this into the water, it's going to start releasing the bubbles. So I can see them already as it's falling. So this is kind of nice because it's going to attract the fish to me. So I've got all the holes all around me. And when that fish scent actually disperses, so it's not baiting, it's just uh, creating actually a bait cloud to get those fish to come in. And pike like small fish. Now, if you look in the hole, you can see these are actually, or it's organic. You can see the little um, flake. It's uh, like sparkle and it looks like fish scales and you can see the frothing, the bubbles coming up. That's going to last for about 10 minutes. But while that's happening, I'm going to put a bait fish on. So I'm going to take my minnow and I'm going to hook him just behind the head without going through the spine. I want him to be nice and lively and pike like to take a bait fish head first. So I want to make sure my line isn't tangled up and we should see, look at, you can see how lively this guy is. Now that I've got my line down, what I'm going to do is actually set up the trigger system for the flag. Now you'll see here that there's an actual hook mechanism, okay? So this is a feature so that it can actually sit in this cradle and I have the line over it or underneath it. So I'm going to put that in there and this is the actual trigger system right here. See the little knob? I'm going to put the line around it and I'm going to put the flag behind it. And I'll show you in a minute how it works. So when a fish, when a fish comes to grab the line, let's say I'm going to put some tension on it. Watch that trigger system. See the flag pops up. Now let's say a fish is bigger. It can actually pull the rod down and if it's really big, it'll actually pull the rod and engage the drag and the hooks actually stop the rod from going down. Flag just went up, still on, yes. And this is a nice little pike. Gonna let it off on the drag a little bit. Come on up, little pike. I'm being ge gentle with him because I've got a light monofilament leader. Look it, isn't that a nice pike from a small lake? And I might have to run back and get my pliers because I don't, oh, he's not hooked too bad. There, nice little pike for starters. Now this is interesting because this is where I dropped the bait cloud down. So I don't want to hold them out of the water too long. You know, when you're dealing with some of the smaller lakes, these are actually average size pike. You'll get them up to seven, eight pounds. So I'm just going to get him back in the water and he's going to take off pretty quick. Boy, is that water cold? There he goes. Okay, you know what? Because we've got such mild temperatures, I'm going to have to get some more ice to stabilize this base. Cause you can see we're losing even this ice that we put here is really melting quickly. I want to make sure that if I get a bigger pike, it's going to keep my base there. It won't go into the water. Closed captioning is brought to you by MD Marine Insurance. Boat insurance made easy. Ice anglers target a wide variety of fish species through the ice, ranging from panfish like crappie and bluegill and perch, right to lake trout, walleye, pike, and even whitefish. Now I'm getting ready to do my jigging because that's where I'm going to be moving around while my tip up is set up with my minnow. Now what I've done is I've chosen a spoon that's about uh, I'd say an inch and a half long and it has a nice bend to it so I'm going to get a lot of wobble. It's pearl with um, orange spots on one side, silver on the back and I'm not going to tip it with any bait. Now you can see I've got a good selection of lures here but I'm partial more to the flashy spoons for the northern pike. Now the one nice thing about the tip and jig system is that every handle you can actually change the rod so there's the rod tip this particular one is a medium one the one I've got set up on the tip up is a light and there's a heavy one here if I wanted to use the heavy one all I would do is push that in and it locks it in solid so I'm going to take that one out put this one back in so literally it's almost like three rods in one Each of these fish species have very specific areas where they like to feed and live during the winter months. 
Ice thickness will normally dictate how far out ice anglers can go to pursue their catch. For example, if we have a mild winter and there isn't a lot of ice, they'll be limited to fishing smaller body of water and staying close to the shorelines where they'll probably catch panfish and some of the smaller game fish. If it's a nice cold winter and lots of ice builds up, even in the deepest parts of the lakes, they'll be able to venture out sometimes three or four miles and fish water that's 100 feet deep for real trophy fish. So you get your exercise. See if this fish is still on. That rod was going up and down. Yes. You know what? The fish don't have to be huge to have fun when you're ice fishing like this. I feel like a kid here. Actually, this would be perfect fishing with kids. I don't know how well this guy's hooked, so I'm not gonna, oh. He wants to take line out. You can see all the snow has melted, so I can actually get a good view of the pike. Look at that. Just slid him right on top. You know, this guy uh, is probably about, I'm guessing, 16 or 17 inches long. He's not a monster by any means, and you can see he's hooked very lightly, just on the edge of the mouth. That hook should just pop out. You know, it's amazing when you think of it. We're just the first week in March, and it's so mild. Let's see if this guy will just slide down, and there he goes. Yeah, for being like the first week in March, we're about a couple weeks away from officially spring being here, March 21st. And the geese are back. I think they're a little bit baffled because they're wondering where the open water is. The only open water is where the holes are. I'll tell you, this uh, tipping jig has gotten a lot of activity. I only had one hit jigging, so now I'm experimenting with different size spoons. Now you can see pike are notorious for twisting in the line. So this guy just um, spun everything on the drop shot rig, so I gotta make sure that it's untangled before I set it up with another minnow. So, because I want that minnow to swim around. You know, these rigs are very inexpensive. They call them pickerel rigs when there's two hooks on a line. And all it is is a piece of wire that's been twisted, and it actually spins around the main line so that even if a fish wants to swim around, he's not gonna twist your line up. And the little metal arm actually holds the hook away from the main line. And then all I've done is use two split shot on the bottom. This year we've had a very mild winter. And today I decided to fish a smaller lake and to target Northern Pike. For those of us that love to fish northern pike, you know that if you locate weeds, you locate pike. And even through the winter months, some of the best depths to find them at is between five and 10 feet of water in shallow bays or off of points and even off of bars that are in the middle of the lake. You know, with this mild weather, we've had a strong wind come in, and for some reason, it's put the fish off. I've gone from jigging with a wobbling spoon to just putting a split shot on and a hook and a minnow, and I've had fish hit so lightly, you can see I've got a fish working it now. Okay, I got him. You know, these fish aren't huge, but they're so much fun on light line. Look at this gorgeous pike. This is what I'm talking about. These guys are so much fun. I'm gonna try very gently to slide my finger underneath without hurting him or me to get that hook out. He was just hooked lightly, just through the roof of the mouth. Look, nice late winter pike. You just have to be patient. A lot of times when the weather conditions change like this, you know, the bite gets a little bit slow, but I got a feeling if we stick it out in a couple of hours, maybe when the light starts to get down a little bit lower, the fishing will get a little bit better. But you can see how slick they are in camouflage. These guys love to ambush bait fish. So they'll be in shallow areas, shallow as three or four feet in the winter time around the weeds and just ready to pounce on those fish. And it won't take long. There he goes. Now, this is the simple rig that I've been using. It's just a split shot about, uh, I'd say, eight inches up from my hook, and I've actually used a little snap, almost like a leader where my hook is. And I'm just using these bait fish. You know, I have this little aerator system going on, because I had to buy these last night, because the bait shops weren't open early in the morning when uh, we left, and the little aerator really keeps them healthy. These guys are little golden shiners. They're about three to four inches long, which is the ideal size if you're targeting pike. 
Now I can't stress enough that pike like to hit their prey head first. So what I'm doing is very gently just hooking this fish just below the top of the back, but I want, don't want to hurt him. I don't want to go through the spine. Now the reason I'm doing that is pike like to hit head first. So when they take their prey, especially smaller pike, you want to have that hook at the front, not between the dorsal fin and the tail. Pike have very good vision, and one of their favorite techniques for feeding is to use an ambush technique, where they actually cruise in and out of weeds and either lay around weed beds and weed lines and wait for bait fish to come to them. When they see bait fish coming, they lunge out very quickly with their long body. So when you're ice fishing, whether you're using a tip up or whether you're jigging, usually the hits are very strong. You know you've got a fish on. This is interesting. I have a nice fish on and a lot of weeds. And he's all rolled up. And the spoon is caught on the ice. This is amazing. <sighs> okay, look, he's not a huge pike. There's a spoon, it got tagged onto the ice. Look, is this classic? You know, when you talk about pike and weeds, this fish must have been like right around these big thick weeds. Look at what it brought up here. This is like uh, a pound and a half of weeds. In this pike, you can see he's got something in his stomach. So he's actually a plump pike. But he hit so hard and fought so hard. And then I think because he fought so hard, he took me down in these weeds, rolled up in the line, and then jammed himself with the hole. What a fish. Now there's that spoon. I'm gonna put that spoon right beside him. Look at, there's that little spoon that he hit. You know, a lot of guys say that eyes are important on a lure. And you can see that this little spoon has a little tiny eye, almost like a minnow. You know, I can handle this fish on the ice because it's so mild today. So I, I don't think uh, it's doing him any harm. And in a second, I'm just gonna release him. I just can't get over all the weeds that he brought up with him. Okay, let me just get him back down here. And he's gonna go, come on, come on. There he goes, beautiful. Because pike have such good eyesight, using very bright, wobbly spoons works very well for them, both in open water and especially during the winter months. The only problem with anglers is that during the winter months, if the pike are laying, waiting in ambush, sometimes we have to cut a lot of holes and try different areas and jig quite a bit aggressively to get those fish to hit. So covering a lot of water is a very good strategy when you're on the ice, especially if you're fishing in a shallow bay. Eight hitters. <laughs> I like this. You reel them up and they just fly right out of the hole. That's perfect. This fish was just working that minnow for like five minutes and it finally hit it. I'm amazed. Look, I don't know why they're hitting so lightly. You know, when you're jigging with a live bait fish, it's just unbelievable that a fish wouldn't come in and just grab it, but they're not. They're just nibbling on it and just get that little hook out. You can see why they call them snakes, right? Nice long bodies, beautiful markings, very camouflage. Little pike, freedom, there he goes. Now you know, I'm using a small hook, but I've kept that snap on there. Look, this is, if I'm not mistaken, that's a number six bait holder hook. So you can see it's not very big. And I've done that on purpose so that they don't see it. I just can't get over that even jigging very gently a live bait fish, how light they're taking it. That guy took about two or three swipes at it and left it, came back, left it, and finally hit it. On this ice fishing trip, I've been able to test the tip and jig complete ice fishing system that enables you to actually jig and use a tip up rig at the same time. It's a system because it comes with rod handles that let you interchange the blanks to have either a light, medium or heavy action rod. Each of the blanks are 20 inches long, but when you attach them to the handle, 
they turn into a 32 inch ice fishing rod. If you love to fish and you live in some of the northern parts of North America where it gets cold in the winter time, you know what? Take advantage of it and go ice fishing. Not only will you have fun, but you'll catch some excellent eating fish. Come on, are you still there? I tried fishing way back, yeah, it's still there. I tra tried fishing way back in the bay and we saw the flag go. I'm hoping this fish is still on here. Come on, where are you? Man. Yeah, still there. Oh, look at this. This is so cute. Have you ever seen a cute pike? Look it. Look at the size of this pike in his brilliant stripes and look at the size of this minnow that uh, he went for. Maybe that's what I've been getting earlier, you know, where the fish just weren't getting hooked. Look, I'm gonna just show you. He's almost like aquarium size, but look look at the size of the bait fish. I'm gonna put the bait fish beside him. Look at that. It's like uh, one quarter of his body. Look, is he cute or what? You know, this guy's got the potential of getting like 15 pounds. Look it, I think that's one of the smallest pike I've ever caught <laughs> ice fishing and I can barely hold on to him. He's gonna swim back in the hole. I'm gonna put him here, because you can see the water on top of the ice. See if he finds his way back here. There he goes. That is amazing. You know, earlier we had so many bites on the tip up. And I mean, this tip up has like a trigger system, you know, that when a fish strikes, it just marks it so easily. And I'd keep running back and it wasn't a false alarm because I'd see the actual rod starting to lift up but we wouldn't get the fish. So, you know, this size of minnow is actually a very good size for walleye and pike. It's about four inches long. This one is a golden shiner. And you can see that it's had quite a few scales removed off it. But even a fish that size, I mean, it's four times the size of this bait fish, went for it and I'm sure would have swallowed it. But no wonder I've been missing the fish earlier. It's because maybe they're small. Canadian sport fishing has been brought to you in part by Rapala, Premium fishing gear, crafted from experience. Yamaha, Conquer Outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Bait to go, the most versatile and portable bait container for anglers. Okay, nice little shuffle to get to the spot here. We definitely have a fish on, very slowly. He's still on there, head shaking. There's definitely a fish pulling. Come on. When do I do it? When do I do it? You should have little lights, you know, like four green lights. First green light, maybe when it goes up to three, three to four, you know you can set the hook. 